Welcome to The Dose with Paul Gordon. We comb the interwebs in search of state showcasing news in order to bring you our daily top five list of stories. This all comes together for your daily dose of statism run amok. Welcome to The Dose. Your daily dose of statism run amok featuring me, Paul Gordon, giving you the countdown, the rundown of the top five news items that illustrate how statism has run amok. And let's get right on with the show. This is an honorable mention on our daily dose. This is from Time Magazine. North Korea tells citizens to prepare themselves for famine. Or, North Korea warns of famine for the good of the state. The road to revolution is long and arduous. North Korea instructed the country Monday to brace itself for possible famine and severe economic hardship, but not to despair because the road to revolution is long and arduous, according to an editorial in the state-run newspaper. The article, published in Rodong Simon, the print mouthpiece of the North Korean government, comes less than a month after the UN Security Council voted in favor of slapping the hermit kingdom with tougher sanctions after the country teased its potential nuclear and military or te- teased its potential nuclear military capabilities earlier this year did they mean tested the cape uh, the, the editorial stated that hardship might come my, c- hardships to come might evoke another arduous march arduous march the term assigned to the famine that struck the country in the mid 1990s killing as many as 3 million people reports the telegraph a British newspaper. Now, of course, the uh, Bernie Sanders supporters will tell you that they are democratic uh, socialists. North Korea is also democratic socialist. Hey, they have democracy. People vote. And uh, they have gone to the place where the Bernie Sanders supporters will eventually take us, which is for the good of the state, for the good of the whole. If a few million people have to die, dude, what do you, what do you, what do you, what do you, you know, what, what are you going to do? Who are you, who, who, who is going to build your roads if people don't buy, die of famine in the name of the glorious state? And the article continues, we may have to go on an arduous march during which we will have to chew the roots of plants once again. No, we will have to go on an arduous uh, starvation plan in which millions will have to die. Of course, they'll blame it on the West and on whoever else they want to blame it on. And the uh, stupidos, uh, I believe that there are probably still genuine believers of the North Korean system within North Korea, the stupidos. And I'm not talking about the people that are scared to death that if they say anything wrong, they're going to end up in a concentration camp or just executed right then and there. The stupidos will believe exactly what the dear leader tells them to believe, and this will be a moment when the whole community will come together. Folks, don't kid yourselves. We're not as far from North Korea as we think we are. And the ideals espoused, not just by Bernie Sanders, but to a lesser extent Hillary Clinton and to an even lesser extent Donald Trump, Ted Cruz. I'm just going to count those. I'm not going to count Kasich as a viable alternative. Uh, they, they, they're, 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 they're swimming in the same sea of collectivism. So don't kid yourselves. And if you want to avoid starvation in the name of the state, vote harder. Yeah. Now just imagine if that didn't even make our top five. What kind of crazy statism running muck do we have in store for you? Here we go to. Number five. So I feel like I have to have a little bit of a caveat here. I do not want what I am about ready to say in any way, shape, or form to lead to a belief that I am advocating for or supporting Donald Trump. This story is from 
reason.com. You know, the guys funded by the Koch brothers. Because, hey, if the Koch brothers want to fund this show, by the way, uh, please do so. I am, I am basically living on the North Korea plan at this point. I am living off of grass and, and ideals and my love for the dear leader. So unless the Koch brothers want to come and sponsor me, I'm going to give in to my impulse to be a worshiper of the dear leader in North Korea. Scripps College student body president says Trump's 2016 whiteboard message is intentional violence. Or, the alternative title, the mere name Donald Trump is now racist because derp. So this is written by Robbie Suave. Robbie Suave. Here we go again. A Mexican-American student at Scripps College woke up to find that someone had scrawled Trump 2016 dun, 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 on her whiteboard. I gather that the board is on her dorm room door. The student government president has condemned the message as intentional violence and vowed to punish the perpetrator. Punish the perpetrator because liberty! Something. Minju Kim is a student body president of the private women's college in Claremont, California. On Saturday, she sent a campus-wide email alerting fellow students to the whiteboard incident and informing them of the counseling and bias reporting services available to the traumatized. Now I'm going to use my really sarcastic voice for this next part. This racist act is completely unacceptable, wrote Kim, according to Inside Higher Ed. Regardless of your political party, this intention of violence committed directly to a student of color proves to be another testimonial that racism continues to be an undeniable problem and alarming threat on our campuses. If you can hear yourself an ally, talk to your friends and peers about racism, and continue to educate yourselves on what you can do to combat racism inside and outside of scripts and the greater five C's, whatever the heck that is. Campus safety has been notified, and we hope to find the person responsible so they, they can be held accountable for their actions. So you just want to take this in, folks. Donald Trump is the leading candidate for the Republican Party at present. The one of two major political parties for which right now the Republican Party currently holds a majority in the U.S. Senate and the U.S. House. This person is believing that they can set a precedent, or maybe a precedent has been set anywhere else and they're just following it, that the mere mention, the mere writing of Donald Trump's name is now racism. Wow, what a way to completely invalidate if, if, if people after actually fell for the schlock. And of course, there are people falling for the schlock, but none of them are ever going to vote for Donald Trump anyway. And uh, actually, they shouldn't vote because they have the IQ of a snail, which has been already grilled and prepared for eating. But nobody's going to eat these fools, which is sad, really, because that's just wasted snail food, which is, I think that's very unsocialist to be, uh, to be walking around as a wasted snail food element person thingy. When there are people starving somewhere, I'm sure there are people starving somewhere. There are always people starving somewhere. So there are people starving in, in Sir Country name in current year. The article continues, at least the person who chalked Trump 2016 all over Emory University's campus did indeed violate some rules. The same cannot be said of the responsible party at the, re the, the responsible party at Scripps. Whiteboards are explicitly for leaving messages. The Mexican-American student might not have liked the message, but on its face, it isn't offensive and doesn't constitute harassment. It certainly isn't violence, intentional or otherwise. So, Essentially, what these people are saying, what this 
Minju Kim is saying is that if you merely write down the name of the leading Republican presidential candidate, you should be arrested. You should pe- face penalties for your acts of violence against others. And she's going to call in a trauma team to help these poor, defenseless, helpless college students. And this is a private university, so I guarantee you these people spent a lot of money to be in that college. Most likely their parents spent a lot of money to be in that college, a college that someone like me, with my background, where I came from, could have never gotten in unless I got a scholarship. And uh, I don't know how many people in scripts or scholarship. I'd be willing to bet that the overwhelming majority are not. I'd be willing to bet that the overwhelming majority, including this Mexican-American student, including Minju Kim, are there because of their class privilege. Not that I believe in class privilege, but I'm just turning their logic on them. And there you have it. That is just what that is. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the number four story of the day illustrating statism run amok. NBA threatening North Carolina is textbook cultural cronyism. And this is from the Daily Signal. I would alternatively title this State Sports. Attack North Carolina doing the bidding of the Gestapo. This is written by Ryan T. Anderson. Big business has stomped into another state trying to impose the values of the cultural left. This is really cultural Marxism, but you can call it what you will. This time, a governor who dared to stand up for responsible policy is being targeted by big business bullying over bathrooms. At issue is HB2, a bill Republican Governor Pat McCrory signed into law last week after it passed the House 83 to 25 and the Senate 32 to nothing. The bill accomplishes two main objectives. First, it says that private schools, restaurants, stores, and businesses are free to establish whatever bathroom policies they'd like, but the access to government bathrooms will be determined primarily by biological sex. So it doesn't affect what private businesses want to do. It just doesn't make it mandatory for them to do so. Second, it says that North Carolina will have one set of regulations for the entire state when it comes to employment and public accommodation rather than additional piecemeal regulations city by city. And the NBA has stepped in and said North Carolina's law might make it move the 2017 All-Star Game out of Charlotte. The NBA threat over the All-Star Game is particularly amusing. The NBA and its sister organization, the WNBA, apparently think bathroom access shouldn't be based on biology, but basketball leagues should. (laughs) The NBA and WNBA, of course, are free to have gender-neutral basketball teams and to have gender-neutral bathrooms at those games. Not really, because they're actually government organizations. They receive a lot of money from the government that they are threatening to the, the state to impose a policy that even they haven't voluntarily adopted is the height of hypocrisy. And just it's just another as as he says here, cultural cronyism, but 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 so much more. It's it's this big powerful state sports organization using its taxpayer funded wealth to essentially bully the will of the North Carolina government. The North Carolina government that's already spent, I don't know the exact number, but a fair amount of money on on the Charlotte basketball team. What are they, the Charlotte Bobcats, whatever they are? I stopped watching the NBA when the Sixers sucked, which was a long time ago. So, (laughs) yeah, so that happened. But what's more about this, which, which is... It's kind of uh, jarring to me that they're they're not catching on to this. Is the, the 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 democratic socialist of which most of these cultural Marxists claim to be a part of? They're all about democracy, the will of the people. The people they voted in these people, and these people voted overwhelmingly to pass this legislation. And now these big scary businesses. Now remember, 
cultural Marxist, socialist, whatever, they're always anti-business, pro-gov. They're taking the side of big business here. Big business using its big, powerful money is bullying the will of the people. But because the will of the people goes against the cultural Marxist ideology, which is to basically strip everything away that may cause you to choose a voluntary association over state coercion, and and that's what happens when you start to break down the traditional roles of male, female, of of family, of marriage, of all the those type of voluntary associations. Not that I'm for state enforced or state defined uh, notions of what is male, what is female, what is marriage. That's up to the people. But but the cultural Marxists want to coercively break all of that down so that you are left completely beholden to what the state tells you to do, and you are left with only the state to turn to when you need help. And folks, just to let you know, we're only halfway through. We still have the top three stories to reveal. But before we do, let's go illustrate our piggy, shameless, capitalistic ways and head on out to the marketplace because we're going to get us some money. So, Fishy, I'm looking at the show prep list. What's this fecal roster thing? Oh, that. Well, you you know I'm always getting frustrated by politicians and other awful people, but I didn't want to use that other phrase. Oh, you mean sh** list. Uh, f- brass, why did you say sh** on the promo? Why not? It's not like the FCC listens. Well, my mom listens to this show. You're an adult. She's heard you say before. Oh, Brass, for f- sake. What? What did I say? Find out who made Fishy's Fecal Roster on Chaos Theory, Monday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central, on Vigilant Liberty Radio. Chaos Theory. Are you sick and tired of all that liberty? Does the freedom to collect rainwater and use it as you please seem like way too much liberty for you? Have you been burdened with the choice to buy a gun and carry a gun wherever you want? Did your child run a snow removal business in the neighborhood without getting a government license? And that type of freedom sickens you? If you answered yes to any of these questions, then we have a show for you not to listen to. State of Way at stateofway.com is not the show for people who are sick of the burden of freedom and liberty. If you actually love freedom and you're ready to face how much freedom you actually have under Daddy Gov, then State of Wake is the show for you. So, if you hate liberty, stay the bleep away from stateofwake.com. For everyone else, come in the water's war. This is Niz from Disassociation Nation. As many of you know, I'm an avid vapor. And if you're like me, you're tired of being charged ridiculous amounts of cash for a disappointing experience when flavors just don't deliver. I'd like to take a moment to introduce you to Vapor Renew, a Flavor West company. If you're into mixing and creating your own custom e-liquids, Flavor West has everything you need to make delicious, satisfying flavors. It doesn't matter if you're a flavor chaser or if you love the look and feel of those big, beautiful, puffy plumes. FlavorWest.com can provide you with everything you need. Let's face it, if you vape, e-liquid is an ongoing expense. And if you're a dripper like me, then you know that blowing through a $30 bottle of juice isn't unheard of. Why pay more than you have to? So for excellent quality juice made right here in the United States, head over to VaporRenew.com where they have hundreds of flavors pre-mixed and ready to vape at the most reasonable prices you'll find. Use coupon code R-E-N-U for an extra 10% off your entire order. Great juice at a great price and 10% off. Support companies that support Liberty by making your next purchase at Vapor Renew. Or for mixing supplies, don't forget FlavorWest.com. Welcome back. We are now ready to enter our top three, and here we go. Let's get right to it. The number three story of the day, illustrating statism run amok. So, Cuomo bans state travel to North Carolina because transgenders transgenders can't use whichever bathroom they want. 
and they, at the same hand, they encourage travel to Cuba, where they're harassed and detained. This is from Town Hall. My alternative title is just simply New York Governor Issues Travel Ban to Protest North Carolina Bathroom Laws. This article was written by Leah Barco. What is that? Leah, what is your name, Leah? Let's just uh, figure this out. Leah Barkukas. We got to get the name right, man. Leah Barkukas. I think she's Greek. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo is apparently so disturbed by the fact that transgender people in North Carolina cannot choose which restroom, which restroom or locker room to use based on their gender identity that he has banned all non essential travel to the state. The ban, which took effect upon the signing of the order Monday, requires all New York state agencies, departments, boards, and commissions to review any request for state-funded travel to North Carolina. Any such travel that is not essential to the enforcement of the New York state law or public health and safety will not be allowed. In New York, we believe that all people, regardless of their gender identity or sexual orientation, deserve the same rights and protections under the eyes of the law, Cuomo said in a press release. From Stonewall to marriage equality, our state is being a beacon of hope and equality for the LGD, LGBT community. Uh, they have been a total tool for the uh, Gestapo, willing to bury and destroy anyone who doesn't worship at the Gestapo altar. And we will not stand idly by as misguided legislation replicates the discrimination of the past. As long as there is a law in North Carolina that creates the ground for discrimination against LGBT, LGBT people, I am barring non-essential state travel to the state. By the way, if you want to go to Cuba, that's cool. Because Cuba's cool. Because Cuba's, Cuba's not America. And, and Cuba, even though they actually do target homosexuals for direct persecution, Cuba is not the white middle class, which is our target. See, I am part of the uh, cultural Marxist group that will make sure that we destroy the white middle class in America because we want to destroy America as it is so that we can allow for the emergence of a world state that will guide us towards a greater utopia, towards the collectivist goal of seeing humanity become more perfected, more godlike. Wait, hold on. I'm sorry. I get a little... Uh... I almost believe what I was saying there for a second. So there you have it. It's okay to go to Cuba where they routinely arrest you for being a homosexual. But in North Carolina where you can't just I mean if your if your business wants to decide to create these types of bathrooms that's fine let the free market decide. But the state is not going to coercively force you to open up your bathrooms to be used by anyone who comes up to you and says, oh, yeah, I'm a woman. I'll be using the, uh, the woman's bathroom. Because women will feel really safe when they go into a bathroom and they don't know who's going to come out the other side. And by the way, this uh, legislation uh, says nothing about the folks that have had biological changes or it doesn't. It, you're, you're not gonna. They're not creating a police force that you know. If you if you look like a woman, if you're dressed as a woman, even if you look a little manly, because some real women uh, actually look manly. Yes, I said real women. Yes, I did say real women because I believe in biology and science. If you look like a woman, and I'm not gonna try to figure out whether you're a real woman or not, unless you know it's like super duper obvious somehow, and you go into a bathroom, nobody's gonna stop you. Nobody has been stopping you. But if you're dressed as a man and you look like a man and you say, hey, I'm a woman, I'm probably going to say, no, you can't go in there. You can't go into that bathroom. Okay. I've solved all of the world's problems. You're welcome. And I hope that you're listening to all this and you're saying, what the heck is going on with the world? What could possibly be the number one story? Because these stories are insane. We're not even at number one yet. 
we're only at number two. Here is the number two story of the day that best illustrates statism run amok. This is from Fox News Politics. Feds to find schools for not following Michelle Obama's lunch rules or, alternatively, without government, who will fund, who will force our kids to eat crap? From the article written by Elizabeth Harrington, the federal government is taking steps to find schools that do not comply with First Lady Michelle Obama's school lunch rules. The U.S. Department of Agricultural Food and Nutrition Services issued a proposed rule Monday to codify parts of the Healthy Hunger-Free Kids Act, which was championed by Mrs. Obama. The regulation which punish schools and state departments with fines for egregious or persistent disregard for the lunch rules that imposed sodium and cal- calorie limits and banned white grains. Ooh! Banned white grains! A West Virginia preschool teacher was threatened with fines for violating the rules by rewarding her students with candy for good behavior in t- June 2015. Was threatened with fines by rewarding her students with candy. That is the ins- insanity that we are now living under. There is no part of your lies that the government can't find a justification for monitoring. The government now seeks to make fines enforceable by regulation. That's right. By regulation. This is where the real power in the state is, thanks to the early American progressives under the architecture of Woodrow Wilson. Woodrow Wilson designed a program that was uh, calling for pure democracy, The will of the people. People should be able to vote easily. More people should be able to vote. We need more, 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 more votes. Easy, 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 easier votes. And then as soon as we get the will of the people, we get the congressmen elected. Congressmen pass bills, and they become laws. And then the regulators get to change the laws whenever they want, which is what's happening here. Regulators are going to change the law. They're essentially rewriting law, but they're doing so under cover of darkness. There is no face. There is no name behind who exactly these regulators are. They don't run for re-election. They have no, they were never elected. They have no accountability. And this is exactly how the progressive system is designed to work. It uses mob democracy to create the illusion that you are controlling the government But what it does is creates a whole army of regulators that actually do the job of governance without all that messy politics stopping them from from engineering and manipulating and managing the collective whole towards the greater perfection. And it ends with this. Under Section 303, the Secretary of or or State Agency may establish an assessment against any school, food authority, or school administering the child nutrition programs if the Secretary or the State Agency determines that the school or school food authority failed to correct severe mismanagement of any program, failed to correct, correct repealed violations of program requirements, or disregarded a requirement of which they have been informed. The proposed rule states. In other words, the rule will create a new power in the, the, the law, which wasn't there before and wasn't passed by Congress. This is the progressive way. But, 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 the school lunches. <laughs> That's right, ladies and gentlemen, be excited! Be pumped up! Woo-hoo! Yeah! Because that wasn't good enough. That wasn't enough statism running not muck. We need to know. We need to know. What is the, the number one story? This is the number one story of the day. Highlighting statism run amok. Let cops keep that illegally taken stuff, A.G. Lynch says. This is from the Washington Post, and their title is The Feds Have Resumed a Controversial Program That Lets Cops 
take stuff and keep it. This is by Christopher Ingram. The Justice Department has announced that it is resuming a controversial practice that allows local police departments to funnel a large portion of assets seized from citizens into their own coffers under federal law. The Equitable Sharing Program gives police the option of prosecuting some asset forfeiture cases under federal instead of state law, particularly in instances where local law enforcement officers have a relationship with federal authorities as part of a joint tax task force. The Justice Department had suspended payments under this program in December due to budget cuts included in last year's spending bill. In the months since, we made the difficult decision to defer equitable sharing payments because of the $1.2 trillion bill rescinded from the Asset Forfeiture Fund. The financial sovereignty of the fund has improved to the point where it is no longer necessary to continue deferring equitable sharing payments, spokesman Peter R. Carr said Monday. The Asset Forfeiture Fund acts in many ways like a revolving fund. Yeah, a government revolving fund comprised of, if we actually believed in the Constitution, illegally seized assets. Carr explained in a follow-up email, Forfeited proceeds are being deposited throughout the year to replenish the funds that are simultaneously flowing out of the asset forfeiture fund to pay for approved agency expenses. Yeah! Like that one cop, uh, I forget what uh, uh, state he was in, uh, uh, state cop that uh, spent $26,000 to buy cowboy hats like that. He noted that when the Justice Department announced the suspension back in December, it remained very eager to resume payments as soon as it is fiscally feasible to do so. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's what they need to do. Uh, then I'm going to skip through part of this article. A wide-ranging Washington Post investigation in 2014 found the police has seized $2.5 billion in cash from people nationwide since 2001. That makes them way bigger thugs, way bigger uh, thieves than the people that they call thieves. Some of them are actually are thieves, but the cops are also doing the bidding of, of government thievery. Uh, $2.5 in cash from people nationwide since 2011 without warrants or indictments. See, that's the big thing. This is where this is coming from. You are guilty until proven innocent in this system. They take your money, and then they go ahead and spend your money before you have been able to get your money back. Which, you know, why are they taking your money in the first place? Because they're the government, and they have the guns. And if you don't allow them to take your freaking money, they're going to kill you. Which is kind of what thugs do when, when they hold you up with a gun. But they're... No, no, just just move on. Just move on, Paul. Nothing to see here. In response, then Attorney General Holder announced new restrictions on some federal asset forfeiture pra practices. These restrictions were meant to limit the ability of state and local law enforcement officials to choose more lenient federal forfeiture guidelines over state laws. Listen to that. They were meant to limit the ability of state and local law enforcement officials. So, so, so Eric Holder, he was like, you know what, today... The government is going to allow you to have a little bit of a longer leash. That's Lou Fiend's thing, by the way. He's in Freedom Fiend's The Longer Leash campaign. You should check that out. But critics say the reforms don't go far enough and still leave discretion for local authorities to choose more permissive federal laws by acting as part of a joint. So that means even if your state passes laws to try to prevent you from taking people's stuff, you can go ahead and turn to federal law to allow you to take poor, uh, people's stuff. Asset forfeiture is fast growing in 24 fast growing in 2014 for instance. Federal authorities seized more than 5 billion dollars in assets. Dude, that's more than the amount of money lost in every single burglary that year. You just take that in. Burglary was a little bit under 4 billion dollars. But the federal, the, the these these federal authorities took five 
billion dollars. Now, that's federal authorities. We don't even know what's going on at the state level, what are these state and local folks seeking. I'm sure that if you did the math, it's uh, much higher than $5 billion. Because that is government. This asset forfeiture demonstrates in a naked sense exactly what state government is in its current coercive form. It is organized theft, nothing more. Reformers had hoped that the suspension of the program in December was a signal that the Justice Department was looking for ways to rein in the practice, but that no longer appears to be the case. This really was about funding, not a genuine concern about the abuses rampant in the equitable sharing system, said Scott Bullock, president of the Institute for Justice, in an interview. Yeah, um, exactly. Uh, you could have had Loretta Lynch go ahead and say that. Listen, man... It's not about your liberty. It's about the federal government's ability to fund the purchase of cowboy hats for a police department. $26,000 to buy cowboy hats for a police department. If we don't take your stuff, who will buy cowboy hats for the police? Oh, yeah, that makes, that makes sense. So the article continues. The suspension of the program had outraged law enforcement groups. The law enforcement groups were outraged. How dare you? How dare you cut us off from this money that was illegally seized from citizens who were not proven to have even committed a crime and weren't even charged with uh, making a crime? We are seeing a lot more pushback from law enforcement, Bullock said, even to the point where they are making budgetary appeals saying, we need this. For our bottom line, our cowboy hats. If we can't buy our cowboy hats, who will build the roads? And that's something that's been unusual to see. And it goes to our point about what this is really about, raising the revenue, he said. Law enforcement groups appear to have had some successes in rallying members of Congress to their side. In January, New Hampshire Senators Kelly Ayoto and Jean Shaheen called on the Justice Department to restore the payments. Now I want you to take it in. Kelly Ayoto. Do you know who Kelly Ayoto is? She's a Republican. Jean Jaheen is a Democrat. They all support this because all of them, Republicans and Democrats, are slave masters and enablers of the state, which is nothing more than organized crime. So thank you. And thank you for voting because when you vote, what you do is you stop all this from happening. Oh, no. You vote harder, nothing happens. And I just want to add, if everyone stopped doing my state crimes, my local crimes, my federal crimes, think about the municipalities and the police departments and the state agencies that would go belly up because they're not getting the revenue. So What you really have to take in is that government is a business that relies on you to commit crimes so that it could, quote unquote, justify taking money from you because the amount of money that it just steals from you in the form of taxes, taxation is theft, as we all know, isn't enough. It needs more. So there you have it, folks. This has been your top five for March 29th, 2016. Hope that you have enjoyed this nutty romp through statism run amok. We may be joining you tomorrow. We're still in the testing phases for this show. We may not. When we do get this show fully running And like right now, we're at uh, 39 minutes, so we're going to have to get it down. I want to try to get it down to a 30-minute show. When we do get it down, it'll be on at 11 a.m. Thank you so very much for joining us here on the first test show, The Dose, featuring Paul Gordon, or with Paul Gordon. What do you guys like better, featuring or with? Eh, Who cares? At any rate... Join us tomorrow where we'll have something, whether it's The Dose or The Daily Show or an episode of my dog Max barking at the mailman. Whatever it takes. Until then, good night and good day.